Hey guys, Professor Bill, Comic Book University, Wonder Woman, issue number 62. It's going to end the, uh, the, uh, the, the arc. <laughs> so let's get into this. The Just War finale. G. Willow Wilson on writing. Zermanico is the, Zermanico is the artist. Romulo Fajaro Jr. on colors. Pat Brousseau on letters. Terry and Rachel Dodson on the cover. And the variant covers by Matteo Scleria. Uh, I know I, Scalera, close enough. Uh, Wonder Woman is created by William Moulton Morrison uh, and H.G. Giger. I don't know why I even bother. I don't know why I bother. Anyway, so, um, yeah, Wonder Woman and Ares go at it with each other and they get into a fight and Aphrodite goes up and stops them and... She's like whispering something in his ear and he finally stops. He's like, please take it back. No, those words once spoken can never be taken back. And you know what she whispered in his ear? Gore was right. Uh, no, it's not actually what she wrote be, or what she said because that would be freaking awesome. Actually, we don't know what she said because it's not revealed. <laughs> so um, obviously this was supposed to be a, a play off of that in some way, shape or form. And it didn't work. It, I can't even say it didn't work as well as that worked um, back with Thor and Nick Fury. You know, like this just this just didn't work for me. Uh, th there was there was a lot that was wrong with this comic book for me. A lot that just didn't work. Like there there were things said. Mm, man, like there's things said that can be taken multiple ways, you know, like a double entendre, you know what I'm saying? A, uh, a word or a saying has double meanings. So you can take it as a uh, suggestion, you could take it as innuendo, you could take it as advice, you could take it as a warning. You know, a bunch of different ways to look at things. Um, in this particular case, no, they were pretty blatant. And while I don't necessarily disagree with any of them, yeah, when you lay it on a little too thick like that, it's, oh, man, like you can add too much spice. You ever go, to, let's put it this way, you ever go to an Indian restaurant back in the 90s, um, back when um, uh, it wasn't like, you know, a common thing for uh, for for Indian restaurants to be all over the, the, the country? I'm talking about America specifically. And you, you go to an Indian restaurant and there's some Indians you never met before and they just opened so they haven't had too many opportunities to talk to, you know, regular old uh, non-Indian food per, uh, cuisine pur purveyors. Anyway, um, and you'll say something like, or they'll say, you want the spicy or the mild? And you'll say, you know what? Let's try the spicy. And then you like, you know, burn your mouth, you know, like, ah, 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 and all the water in the world doesn't quite fix that. It's tomato. That's what actually works. Um, ketchup is a decent substitute. Milk may work, but now tomato. Just take the tomato. Nah, you'll be fine. Um, but, you know, you, you 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 then later get the idea that, oh, yeah, spicy. You know, when, when they do the spice, all I could taste is the spice. That's all I could taste. But then when the, you talk to the Indians and say, you really like that stuff, how can you eat it when all you get is the spice? And they say... How can you even taste your food with no spice? Interesting, right? The perspective's there. But in, in this one particular case, maybe somebody's going to see it as, oh no, this was really good. How are you going to understand a message if they don't just throw it right at you? With me, it's like, this is a bit much. <laughs> I think there's too much spice. And I can't taste my meal, just the spice. So, um... Yeah, there were a lot of scenes that didn't work. I'm going to show you the one scene here. Um, this one right here. Ares goes and throws the, the rope back at... Uh, uh, actually, this is where she's, uh, she's, she's grabbing it and whatnot. She, mm, Ares goes and throws the rope at her. All right? When, she, when he throws the rope at her, she, what, catches it? Look at that top scene up there. This this one right here. Catches it? Yeah, but she caught it by letting a man bound her hands. Now, I get it. He's not a human, but... Sorry, Wonder Woman loses all of her powers when she's bound. And that includes by her own 
a lasso of truth. So I don't get it. Maybe there's some some rule there where if Ares does it that you know, or God does it, it doesn't matter. I'm pretty sure though, if she's ever bound, that's it. She's done. She's lost her powers. So that was just really weird for me. Anyway, um, there was a there's just a lot here, and by the time I got to the end of the comic, because where the comic book should have ended, I realized I'm only like 15 or 16 pages in. So I'm like about halfway through the comic book. The rest of the comic book is just, it felt like, you know, the, the Return of the King, the third part of the Lord of the Rings trilogy, where it's like there were eight endings. And I'm just like, dude, you didn't need this many endings in here. It's like, sometimes an ending is just an ending and you just kind of wrap things up. When you have a an eight page epilogue, I didn't count them, just uh, I'm, I'm guesstimating. But when you have approximately an eight-page epilogue, that's a bit much. It's a bit much. So I don't know how I feel about this. I, I know I don't like this particular arc. I mean, I'm just not a fan of this. Not at all. Like, this just, there was so many things that happened that you didn't need for them to happen. They didn't matter. There were so many things that happened that just don't matter. What happened to those animals? The 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 beastimals, you know? What happened to those things? What, what, oh, wow. So anyway, yeah, and, and and just the idea, it's like all the battles that she had with this amnesiatic Ares, and where did it go? What did it solve? What did it help? Is there supposed to be a message there that fighting doesn't help anything? Because because it doesn't make sense. Nothing here actually made sense. And they're still talking to each other. Hey. He's like, okay, so do we part as enemies? Well, we're not parting as friends. Wonder Woman, who's all about love. Sorry. I'm going to need to repeat that, if not for you, for myself. Wonder Woman, who's all about love. She can't find a way to recognize. I mean, I know, I know that the typical American belief, and I'm not accusing Miss Wilson of this at all, because I know she doesn't believe it, but the, 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 the typical average American belief is that you have to crush your enemies under boot, you know what I'm saying, to, to, and, and just make it so they can never rise up against you again. But none of that's ever worked, you know. Ever. There's never been a time in history where we could say, yeah, that actually worked. It was a good idea. Let's keep doing that. It's always caused problems for us afterwards, later on. And that goes with all armies in all nations, all empires, you know? There, there are some times in history where, where bitter enemies who were just in war with each other can actually become best of friends. And you just look at um, after World War II with America and Germany and Japan. Bitter rivals, bitter enemies. But what happened afterwards? America said, you know what? We're going to try and help your two countries and build you guys back up again because you don't deserve to, to wallow in squalor. And all of a sudden, unshakable enemy or unshakable um, allies you know, even to this day, all these years later, pretty impressive. And you figure one woman would be able to notice that also. So no, I, I, I can't say that anything in this comic book actually worked for me. It just felt like this was driving Wonder Woman the exact opposite direction that I've always seen her going. I know they took a lot of risks with uh, Wonder Woman and the New 52. They, they did a bunch of really weird things. But people still kind of gravitated towards it in the most part, for the most part. You know, it's like, oh, if, you, if she ever removes her bracers, she becomes even more powerful than she was before. This regulates her power so she doesn't go into beast mode. Okay, I personally wouldn't have liked that. But somehow the fans were like, oh my God, I'm, 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 give me more. So I could be completely wrong about this. But I just, mm, nothing in here worked for me. Uh, I'm glad that this arc is over. It felt rushed, and it should have been rushed, should have been rushed to be finished, because I just didn't see any salvaging for that. I'd be impressed if this arc could be salvaged some way. But anyway, it's it's over now. <laughs> so I'm curious to see what's going to happen next.
but I get the feeling that it'd be finding out digitally. I'll, I'll, I'll decide that, you know, when I'm actually in the comic book store a month from now or actually two weeks from now. This always comes out the same time as The Flash. So, yeah. Anyway, guys, uh, I, I really do wish that this were better. And if you liked it, if there's anything that worked for you in this, by all means, please let me know what actually made the comic book feel like a Wonder Woman comic book. Anyway, Professor Bill Comic Book University. Class dismissed.